I'm content creator Corey Wamsley. I empower women entrepreneurs by sharing book writing and publishing solutions on my show, Page Turner's Studio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Page Turner Studio with Corey. I'm your host, Corey Wamsley, and we have another exciting show for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to unleash your superpower with transformational love lead her, Sharonda Michelle. And she's going to be talking about her book, and she has some really fantastic shares. So I'm very excited for today's show. First, though, I wanted to tell you about my brand new book, The Treasures We Seek, which is out right now. So be sure to grab a copy if you want to go on a trip to Italy and uh, learn a little bit about <laughs> learn a little bit more about yourself and uh, some of the things that may be buried deep inside. This is a really fun book about uh, my character Kenzie, who discovers some things about herself. So be sure you grab that. And also, I know that if you think about books and writing, then you're probably thinking about books and writing an awful lot and you need a journal, be sure you grab one of our journals. Um, I'm not sure what's up with my camera, but be sure you grab one of our journals. These are up on Amazon and they feature beautiful paintings that were done by me and by my daughter. So let's get into the show. Um, today we have Sharonda Michelle and Sharonda serves as a guiding force for professionals, students, and teams aspiring to elevate their leadership to the next level. She empowers individuals to courageously confront barriers to their growth without compromise. Um, so I'm very excited to bring her on. Let's welcome her. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about your book. So tell me about this. This is And So She Speaks. Do you want to, uh, you have the copy of your book with you. You want to show it off? Absolutely. This is this is my baby girl. Um, I don't have children, but this this right here. Is um, and So She Speaks is really a gift and opportunity for me to share part of my story, which is being a career stuck on strong woman. I'm recovering in that. And I learned how to put myself first. So for those who have a hard time being vulnerable to themselves, but you can tell that procedure or process like the back of your hand, you're flowing and going. That's who this book is for. The person who wants to push aside and prioritize inner fulfillment and leave external achievement and approval behind. Wow. That sounds like such a fascinating book. Um, what gave you the idea to write this? My own story. So even though it's true that um, I was in corporate America for nearly 25 years, I was quoted by the president of the company. Um, I am a best-selling author. It hadn't always been that way. There was uh, a time in my life where I remember where because of my skin color, because of my voice, it wasn't enough for me to speak in my eyes. And so I thought that if I put all of my worth and energy and resources into my job, into the career, trying to make it up the corporate ladder, that I'll be seen, that I will have the all the they says that you're supposed to do, the material things, the accolades and the degrees, but I kept people away and I had no real love for me. And outside of doing all of the, you know, external things we tend to do as spa days and treating yourself to nice gifts and things, mm -hmm. I realized at the end of the day, I had no inner fulfillment. I would simply burn the midnight oil on both ends, thinking if I send this last email, thinking if I, you know, did all the things that would get me seen and elevated that I would find the true me. And then the pandemic comes. I wasn't achieving anything. And it felt like Literally, I was going through withdrawals. And in fact, I was because achieving started to be an emotional addiction. Uh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. And it's so easy, whether you're a woman or whether you're that man who is also trying, you know, to get that accolade or degree or that position, mm -hmm. it's very easy to do. And so it wasn't until uh, the blessing in the pandemic allowed me to go inside so the real me could come out. I couldn't dance it away. I couldn't go out. I couldn't drink it away. I had no relationships going on. So at the end of the day, I gave my heart to me and I realized that I was the key. 
I realized that I was the one I was running for, that I was the one who was doing all of these things so I didn't have to feel, so I didn't have to forgive, so I didn't have to, dare I say, be vulnerable yeah. and express myself to me. So in owning my own brilliance, it's really being committed to that is how I want to show other people, other leaders especially, and students coming up this way. So we have a generation that's emotionally strong and intelligent and have that balance, but they're chasing, not only chasing, but they're attracting luxuries of the heart instead of the society norms of the material things and the positions that we tend to see. Wow, that is amazing. Um and I'm sure that a lot of that resonates with a lot of people. A lot of us have definitely felt the same way um, where uh, you know we're kind of stuffing ourselves down and trying to achieve. And boy, the pandemic sure did some <laughs> interesting things to our thought processes. So I wanted to share your impactful page turner share. We're all being qualified for what we are made for. And in the end, it's all effing good. Tell me a little about this. Yes. So... It took a while for me to understand, you know, when something happens, mostly the bad things, we're always like, why me? What's going on? You know, we tend to take this victim position. However, when the sun is shining, we're never like, why is the sun shining? Why is this bird flying? There's some subjectivity that we use. And so as it relates to what we go through, we're simply being made for what we have put in us innate. Um, that we come here, I feel, to solve a problem. But the only way you get your credibility, your your stripes, if you will, to be that expert in what you're here to do is if you go through the challenges, the circumstances that help build your, build your character so that you can really serve and you're speaking from such a place of certainty and you're speaking from such a place of knowing that you have to be qualified for. So let me say it a different way. If, let's say, Mercedes-Benz was like, listen, we have this new 2030 Mercedes, bell, all the bells and whistles, here are the keys. But by the way, we didn't inspect it, we didn't qualify it, we didn't test it. Are you really going to be like, yes, let me do this? Now, for the bold ones, they may, but <laughs> for the rest of us, you would not want to accept that vehicle or get on a plane unless it's been qualified and tested and gone through something. And so us in our lives, in our story and how there's such a need to help um, each other in society, that's the qualification part. Now, let's talk about the effing good part. <laughs> Like so that. the effing part is, and this is an acronym that I'm going to go through. And so let's go letter by letter, starting with emotions. Most of the time, we cannot get our emotions grounded and centered. When our emotions are not grounded, we cannot focus. So E is for emotions, F is for focus. But when you learn how to focus, there's something that comes up called fear. So you're starting with your emotions, you're now shifting to focus, and then you step into fear, but you have to understand that I know how to check my fear. I have to learn how to check my fear. And when you check your fear, you know that I have the power. So E for emotions, we have F for focus, F for fear, I is I have the power. And when you know, like you know that you have the power, nothing can stop you. No position, no person, no situation, nothing can stop you. And with that, it's game on. And so at the end of the day, when I um, literally got out of the shower, so I get some of my best ideas coming out of the shower. Yeah. <laughs> I took a magic marker and I just started writing. When my emotions are grounded and centered, I can focus. I can check my fear. I know I have the power. Nothing can stop me. It's game on. And I stepped back and I saw, wait a minute. That, it's all nothing good. Like, oh my gosh, like how? <laughs> Does that not um, anchor in everything that happens, everything that you go through for you to remember, I'm being qualified for what I'm made for. It's all left and good. So you can continue to put you first and leave a trail for those that are to come behind you. I love that. That's a really great. Um, I love the Mercedes analogy. I loved all of it. So some really great stuff there. 
Um, I want to share your uh, being a page turner tip. Feeling is freeing. And what frees you will free those you are called to. So tell me about this one. For a lot of my life, I was a neck upper. I did not, I just thought, you know, we're so driven by our intellect, our education. What school are we going to go to? What job are we going to get? All of that is us being a neck upper. But at the end of the day, when I learned the longest journey I had to make was from my head to my heart. Yep. When we begin to feel what comes in here, I then transition from a human doing to a human being. Allowing myself to be moved when in times past, it was just decision. It was me analyzing. It was me pushing and being in such a level of efforting took all the feels away from me. But what it also did, it let me see that I didn't trust me. So when you give yourself permission to feel, whether it hurts, whether it stings, whatever it is, there's a lesson there. And when you learn that lesson, you then get to reach back to those who are coming behind you. You get to reach back to the experiences that you may feel like is just for you, but it's also for the ones you're connected to. So you can say, hey, this is what we're doing. This is how you get through. And it's a way to let you be for someone else who I should say, I know what I needed someone to be for me. So allowing yourself to feel frees you so that you can free those that you're also called to serve. That's awesome. And it just ripples on out. Yes, that that is the thing. And I, I'm, I'm getting excited because this I'm so passionate about this. And to think that so much of my time, um, I suppressed my emotions. I didn't think people deserve to know how I feel. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it may not only kept them away, but it kept me from getting to know me. Exactly. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. So I want to share the turn the page with Corey share when you're writing, believe that the people who need your story most will read it. Is that something that you ever struggled with when you were working on your book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you know, you hear so many times how people are like, yes, this is my book. This is my baby. Mm -hmm. And what you don't realize is how much effort it went into birthing that baby. Mm -hmm. And you are so uh, vulnerably and exposed at this point. And so you are having some of those thoughts that, you know, who may read this? Um, is this going to help anyone? Which I think is normal. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's really normal. And so when you get to where um, you allow yourself to think of your legacy, it helps the process go a lot smoothly. Yeah. I, I find that uh, a lot of my authors, when they're working on their books, they get hung up in this like, oh my God, what if nobody reads it? Well, if you're writing from that perspective, gosh, it's going to be so hard to complete that book. So you have to get through that and understand the right people are going to read it because you're going to be out there talking about it to the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to share the make an impact with Corey tip, understanding that you are an expert and not the expert, like the only expert takes the pressure off of you when sharing your story. And for me, I remember some of the early stages of my business life when people would say like, oh, you're the expert. Everybody has to be the expert. I'm like, that's a lot of pressure. I don't want to be the only person on this planet who knows all this stuff because then everybody's looking at me and going, well, what are we doing? Right. <laughs> have you ever felt this way too? Um, I have, and I can definitely relate. And when I'm coaching my clients, I have to remind myself that I am connecting them to be their own guru. I am the lighthouse that is pushing you in the area you want to go. And in some cases, there's some tough love with that because I share, I'm more committed to your transformation than you being a friend to me. And as the expert, I'm not worried about you liking me, but I know how much that transformation on the other side will mean to you and those connected to you. 
Absolutely. I love that. Well, that's a great place for us to wrap up. So thank you so much, Sharonda, for being on with us today. You shared some really wonderful things. And I'm going to send Sharonda back to the green room and we will wrap up the show. So thanks for being on. Thank you. Well, that was another amazing episode of Page Turner Studio with Corey. Please join us again next week. We're on at 7 p.m. 7 a.m. Pacific time and 9 a.m. Central or 10 a.m. Eastern. And I will be featuring another guest. We're on every Wednesday. So please have a Page Turner's Day and join us again next week. You can learn more about my services and products at auroracorealispublishing.com. Make sure to join me every week on the SWE Media Network YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts.